Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing well. So this episode is going to be quite different than the other ones and we are going to focus on restructuring our project. Now the reason that we want to do this at that stage it is mainly because if we only keep pushing code into a single market.py file then we will probably end up with hundreds of lines of code in a single file. Now that is something that you always want to avoid when you work on big projects because you always want to keep yourself organized. So we are going to have a look how we can structure this project a little bit better. So let's get started. Alright, so now if we take a look to what is inside the market.py file currently, we have a model here and down below we have several routes that we have created. Now, we are going to create more models and more routes in the future. And so it might be a great idea to have a Python file that its name is going to be models.py and also routes.py where we will store all the routes. Now, we are going to spend a few minutes on how to reorganize our project because it is not going to be as easy as grabbing the models to a models.py file and import stuff because we are going to end up with a forbidden import and we are going to explain that in a few minutes. So let's actually try to split our different Flask elements to different Python files. So I will start with creating a new Python file and for sure I will name it models.py and in here I will grab our single item module and I will try to paste it in inside our models and currently I will allow myself to ignore that db variable that is not existing here and I will go back to the market.py and I will do the same process by creating routes.py and then I will go back to our market.py and I will grab in everything from here and paste this in over here. So we could pay attention that we have several errors because several functions are not loaded inside that particular file. So how we are going to get out of this? So let's first go back to our market.py. Now, as you know, in Python, when you use the import keyword to import some file, then what Python does, it executes the entire file line by line. So if you remember, before we actually moved the routes and the models, we used to have a market.py file with models over here and with routes down below. Now we could basically go ahead and use here import models and import routes, but we still have to figure out how we are going to give this models.py the db variable that it's missing. So again, we could try to solve that by moving that line to models.py. So I will paste this in inside here. Now we also end up with missing the SQL alchemy instance. So again, we could grab this in from here and paste this in above here. But we are never going to get out of this because there is always going to be something missing in each file. And then we will end up with something that is called circular imports. Now, what circular imports are? It is basically two files are trying to import from each other. And it is something that is forbidden in Python because each file will end up with some missing variables when it tries to load some variable from Python memory. So in order to avoid this, Python comes up with something that is named packages. Now we can basically package our entire application inside a new directory. Let's call it something like market. And then we can create one more Python file. For example, we can name it run, execute, start, something like that. And then that Python file will know how to import everything step by step. And the only thing that we will have to do is calling that specific file and then that Python file will take care of the rest. So this is the design that we are going to implement in that video. And so by the end of this video, every file will be at its own place and everything will totally make sense for you. So let's actually get rid of those lines that I just pasted in over here and revert them back inside our market.py. 
and then we will remove those again and then now we will basically go ahead and create a package and then we will name it market so let's see how we can do that great so first of all we will go ahead inside our flask market directory and we will create that single file that is going to take care of everything that I just discussed about and I will name it something like run okay so it is going to be responsible to execute our application and what I will do now is grab everything from our market.py and I will cut everything from here and I will basically paste this in over here now as I have completed this Basically, I can allow myself to delete the market.py file because the routes are here and then the models are here. So the market.py is quite empty and I can allow myself to delete that. So let's go ahead and delete that. And I will use the safe delete option. All right. And our next step here will be to create new directory and move our templates, modules and routes.py into that directory so we are packaging every flask element into a new directory that is named market so let's go ahead and create a new directory here and i will name it market and then we will basically move everything from here to that market directory so in pycharm that will be as easy as grabbing it and just hovering it inside the market here then you can see that PyCharm auto completes me by asking if I want to move some files into that directory. So I will basically use the refactor option here. And then you can see that our modules, for example, is located inside the new directory. Now I will do the same with routes and also with our templates. Great, and last we will also move in our market.db. Okay, so let's close each file over here. So our structure right now is that we have our market directory and we have our run.py Python file, which is outside of that market directory. So let's see how we continue from here. Okay, so if we actually take a look to the lines that are left inside our run.py file, they are basically some initialization lines that contains very important information about our web application. Now, what we must do with those lines of code that are left over here is to move them to a special Python file that is called double underscore init. Now, when you work with Python packages, every Python package that is considered as a regular package is going to include one special Python file that its name is always going to be double underscore init double underscore. And what is so special with that file is that when you import it, then before it loads what you want to import to your file, it is basically going to execute that particular file that is named double underscore init double underscore. So it totally makes sense because whenever we want to import some objects or variables from our application, then we probably want to execute those lines of code because those lines of code are what responsible to start our Flask application. So we will go ahead and do that. So I will basically go inside our market directory and I will create an initialization file that will be responsible to define this directory as a package. So I will name it double underscore init double underscore as I said and I will move in whatever is inside that run.py to that double underscore init double underscore file. Now, what is so special with the process that we have done until now is that if we are going ahead from our run.py file and we try to import market, then it is going to recognize it as a package because we have included that double underscore init file. So if we were to try to import that app variable that we have created, then it is going to be perfectly fine because it recognizes that variable from our double underscore init file and anyway it is going to execute it as a first step because this is why we have that double underscore init file and actually the next line that i can allow myself to do here is using app.run and this file is going to be that pointer file that is going to do the rest of the job of importing everything so this is how it is going to work right we are basically going to import 
our application from market package and then we are going to run it. But before we actually try this out, let's add here one more argument and it is going to accept some arguments that we already familiar with and it is going to accept here debug equals true. So we don't have to set up those environment variables anymore. And one more thing that I'd like to add here as a convention in Python is to test out if this run.py file has executed directly. Now the way that we can check that is by writing the conditional of if double underscore name is equal to double underscore main. And again, if you don't know what this conditional is about, I have a video on my channel that you can definitely check out what this special if name equals main does. But basically it checks if our run.py file has executed directly. Okay, so now let's go ahead to our terminal and try to see what will happen if we execute that run.py file. Now I know that there is a great chance that we are going to fail and receive some errors, but I want to show you step by step how we are going to overcome those errors now that we have our package set up. So I will open my terminal and basically the only thing that I have to do now is going ahead and execute that run.py file. Now our web application will start and if we actually try to access it, then you can see that we receive errors that the root URL is not found. Now that doesn't make sense because if we take a look to our PyCharm, then we can see inside our routes.py that that we have the route for our root URL. But the reason this fails, it is because the double underscore init file does not recognize the route that we have created inside that routes.py file. So our first step here is going to be to complete this dunder init file by saying from market import routes. And as you remember, if we import certain file, then Python is going to try to execute what is inside that file. So now we can go back to our web browser and test the results out. Now you can see that our web application is probably down right now because we see that this site can't be reached. And as you can see, we started to receive certain errors about the import. So in that routes.py file, we don't have the application defined. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I will go to our PyCharm and I will basically type in from market import app. And as you can see that app errors are started to disappear but we still have left with the render template error. So we can also go ahead and fix it by saying from flask import render template and then we also have one more error that we must fix in here and that will be the import of our models.py because as you can see we have a line here that says item.query.all and it doesn't know anything about it because it is not a recognized model and I can basically import it like we can import from a regular package in Python and that will be by saying from market dot models import item. So now we have pretty much everything set up in our routes.py and if we have a look inside our models.py then we still have some errors over here left over. So I can basically fix it by saying from market import db because we can import it from our dunder init file. And now everything should work so we can basically test this up by going to our terminal and rerun our application and I will clean my screen again and I will try to run that py file again. And now our website is up and running and I can basically test if everything works properly. And if I refresh it, then you can see that we receive our web application as it's supposed to. Now if I navigate to that market page, then you can also see that everything is quite great. So this means that everything works great and we have completed our packaging successfully. 
Now I know that there was a lot of information that we'll probably have to sink in but I hope that the packaging process was clear and you pretty much understood everything about what I have done here. So again the main idea was to package everything that is related to market and then having one single file that we basically can execute it and then this file will be responsible to do everything for us. Great, so I think that will be it for this episode. If you have any questions or doubts, please consider commenting them out and I can respond to you. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in my next episode.